Well, it's emerged that former President F.W. de Klerk's Nobel Peace Prize has been stolen from his home in Cape Town. Police in the Western Cape have confirmed that a case was reported in April this year and is being investigated. De Klerk was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize alongside former President Nelson Mandela in 1993 for their peace efforts in ending of apartheid. A reliable source has told the SABC News that pieces of jewelry had also been stolen from the house. De Klerk passed away in November last year at the age of 85 after a long battle with cancer. He was the last apartheid era president. Let's continue here now. The new leadership of the ANC will be elected on the first day of conference on the 16th of December. ANC top hopefuls will know their fate on the first day as nominations and voting will be done then. Acting Secretary General Paul Mashadile says the party is hopeful that there will be no delays in the beginning of the conference, despite the ANC being hopeful of no delays caused by the battle on credentials. The party does suspect that some may try and interdict the national conference. We will then have uh, the election of, of the top six uh, on that first evening. Yeah, hopingly it will happen before midnight, but because of delays, it might, it might go well into, into the night. ANC Treasurer General Paul Mashadile has assured ANC members that all disputes raised leading up to the December National Conference will be cleared before the conference sits. He says more than 80 disputes have been reported to National Dispute Resolutions Committee, the National Disputes Resolution Committee chaired by Duduzi Manana following the branch general meetings across the country. Mashadile was at NASRAC, a venue earmarked for the conference in December. Now let's discuss this. We're now joined by Zoom by political analyst Professor Ricky Mukonza. Prof, thank you so much for your time th this afternoon. So it's all systems go for the national conference uh, next month, according to the ANC um, Acting Secretary General Paul Mashadile. We do understand, of course, that the ANC's top contenders, like he said, will know their fate on the first day, you know, as nominations and voting will be done then. What are we likely to see unfold, especially as you consider those who are vying for that? top role, the presidential position. Good afternoon, Unati. Good afternoon to your viewers. Uh, I, I think we are likely to see uh, a very competitive, uh, you know, election. Um, we have seen with uh, pronouncements from nominations uh, that uh, I think uh, we have quite strong contenders, particularly for uh, the position of president, which I think uh, is where uh, most of the most of uh, the people's eyes are on. Um, we are likely to see uh, uh, probably, a, in my opinion, a two-horse race uh, between the current uh, president of the African National Congress and uh, of the country, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, and uh, former health minister William Kize. Um, yes, we do have. Uh, uh, Zuma, um, you know, receiving some nominations, uh, but I think the race uh, for that uh, important position is between the two uh, that I've mentioned. Mm. Now, of course, uh, you know, just in terms of recent developments, of course, the Women's League dropping Dr. Nkosa Zanadlamini Izuma there for ANC president, uh, for President Cyril Ramaphosa instead. And more importantly, and, and, and recently, you know, the Youth League having put um, its bet on Dr. Zwelim Kize. What do these developments mean, particularly for the rise of uh, Dr. Zwelim Kize? I think uh, his nomination by the Youth League is quite important because we know how powerful that uh, um, component of the ANC is uh, within the political matrix of the of the of of, of uh, uh, the party. Uh, so, so it's quite important. Uh, also, given that it adds on to uh, you know the you know significant support that he seems to be enjoying. Uh, from KwaZulu Natal, which we know uh, it has provides quite a number of delegates uh, to the conference. So, so it is quite significant, and um, uh, people can can only uh, discount it at their own peril. 
Now, at the weekend, of course, we heard, you know, a former president, Jacob Zuma, essentially tearing into the credibility of a president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, and his legitimacy, in fact, as president, saying that he, in fact, bought votes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But one of the things that he's also raised is the fact that the ANC itself doesn't seem to be sticking to its policies that it, you know, discusses in its conferences and makes resolutions thereof, uh, are saying that those are never implemented. What then can we expect for, for this conference, especially as it relates to some of the policies that the ANC adopts? I, I think um, the pronouncement by the former president, uh, Jacob, Jacob Zuma, um, I, I think they have some truth in them. Uh, in the sense that um, if we look at uh, some of the police pronouncements by the ANC uh, in the in the in the previous um, elective, elective conference, uh, we, we, we only seem to hear more uh, about the step aside uh, policy being what was the focal point. Maybe because uh, uh, there was a focus on fighting corruption. Uh, but but other policy pronouncements that were made, uh, the, the the party appeared to be very very silent in in terms of their implementation. Uh, maybe the question uh, on Ati is is the ANC at its conferences agreeing on implementable policies? Mm. Uh, because it would appear that uh, uh, these policies are agreed upon. But there is hesitance uh, in implementation, not, um, not, not, not for another. I think it's because some of the policies have uh, re repercussions that uh, individual leaders may not necessarily want to, uh, you know, to see in their term of office or during the, the during their term of office. Mm, I suppose that's why it's important then to select the right leaders, as it were. Prof, thank you so much for your analysis and your time this afternoon. Really do appreciate it. Political analyst there, Professor Ricky Mukonza.